five on mysterious Mount Cucamonga. In five minutes, Professor Gizmo's mighty missile will blast off for outer space. A feverish, frantic, last-minute check is being made by Professor Gizmo himself and his able assistants, rough and ready. Gentlemen, unless I miscalculated my calculations, this missile can't miss. How's that, Professor? Ready? Operation Moonbeam is ready. You mean we're about to blast off, Professor? Right, Ruff. The Gizmo rocket is ready to start the countdown. Well, Giz, when you count down, count me out. You mean you're not going ready? You could be the first dog on the moon. Are you serious? I don't want to be the first dog on dog on the moon. Maybe you'll change your mind later. My head's made up. I'm not moseying off to no moon. If you'll excuse me, Prop. I got work to do. Careful, Reddy. This is no place to swing a broom around. Reddy, look out! What happened? I was afraid of that. Reddy accidentally short-circuited the missile's control panel. Professor, do something! I'm getting out of here before it's too late! You're too late already, Reddy. Gentlemen, don't panic, but we have just blasted off. We just unblast this blasted, misguided missile. Sorry, Reddy, but there's no turning back now, gentlemen. We're in real trouble. I kind of figured that. You don't know the half of it. We don't have enough fuel to get to the moon. And we don't have any food on board. And I'm hungry already. It's even worse than that, fellows. There's no oxygen aboard. No spacesuits. No cosmic ray defragmatizers. No nothing. Meanwhile, back on Earth, radar screens are tracking Gizmo's missile's flight. Ladies and gentlemen, we interrupt the commercial to bring you a special news bulletin. Professor Gizmo has launched his rocket earlier than anticipated, and we hope to have a report soon of its progress. Professor Gizmo isn't worried about his progress. He has other things to worry about. Gentlemen, I just figured it out. In 30 seconds, the first stage of the rocket disengages. One minute later, the second stage drops off. Then, if the parachute works, the control section will float gently down to Earth. And if the parachute doesn't work... There goes the first stage. And there goes the second stage. Gentlemen, we're falling. You mean we're gonna crash? That all depends. Keep your fingers crossed. And we'll all keep our fingers crossed, fellows. Don't miss The Missing Missile Mystery, the next episode of Rough and Ready. At Mount Cucamonga, Professor Gizmo was making a final check on his moon missile when Reddy accidentally bumped the starter switch with his broom. And boom! The mighty moon missile blasted off with no supplies and only half enough fuel. Then, the first stage dropped back to Earth. Then, the control section of Gizmo's moon missile with Ruff, Reddy, and Gizmo plummets to Earth. Gee whiz, Giz, we're falling like a lead balloon. According to my drop thermometer, we're falling a thousand feet a second. Well, how about pulling the string on that parachute, Professor? No, no, Ruff. The parachute opens automatically. Just keep your fingers crossed. And my toes, too, Giz. Well, it worked. 
the parachute is opening, and the control section of Gizmo's rocket is floating gently down to Earth. But it was a little rough on Rough, Reddy, and Gizmo. Gentlemen, we made it. Yeah. All we gotta do is make it back to Mount Cucamonga. And make another rocket. Not so fast, fellows. There's strong winds up where you are, and you're not floating down at all. You're drifting sideways, hundreds of miles above the Earth. And back on Earth, radar screens scan the skies, searching for the missing moon missile with no luck. It is reported that all contact with Professor Gizmo's rocket has been lost. Stay tuned for further developments. As the wind velocity increases, the chances of contacting the missing missile decreases. Hmm, that's strange. We're not falling anymore. We better take a look outside. As Professor Gizmo presses a control button, a panel slides open. And for the first time, our adventurous friends see the predicament they're in. You know where we are, Giz? Certainly. We're lost. Strong stratospheric winds are blowing us sideways. I don't know where we'll land. I just hope we land on land, cause I can't swim. Steady, Reddy. The whole world will be tracking us by radar. We wouldn't want to worry, you fellows, but the tracking stations have lost track of your track, Jack. Ladies and gentlemen, there is still no trace of Professor Gizmo's moon missile, but an intensive search is underway on land, sea, and in the air. Well, at long last, Rough, Reddy, and Gizmo are drifting down to Earth. But where? This is a strange and dangerous looking land. Land ho, gentlemen. You call that land, man? Well, actually, it's ice, but it looks solid. Well, we'll soon know, Joe. So let's go. The last stage of Gizmo's rocket is settling down to Earth at last. But from the looks of this desolate land of ice and snow, Rough Reddy and Professor Gizmo may be falling into still more trouble. Well, keep smiling, fellows. Don't miss. Never Land in Never Never Land, the next episode of Rough and Ready. <laughs> Rough, Ready, and Gizmo, parachuting down from Gizmo's ill-fated moon rocket, were drifting to Earth when strong winds started blowing their chute sideways. It is reported that all contact with Professor Gizmo's rocket has been lost. After hours of drifting, the adventurous trio find that they are floating down to a strange land of ice and snow. Where are they? Well, I'd like to know myself. And so would Rough, Reddy, and Professor Gizmo. So, let's find out what this is all about, shall we? Nothing but snow. I don't like to land in a land without no land. Gentlemen, I still don't know where we are, because my directionometer isn't working, and my blastometer isn't working, and my discombobulator isn't working. In fact, one smack of Reddy's broom put everything out of whack. Well, just give me a hairpin, Giz, and I'll fix everything. If this thing doesn't slow down, we're going to make a crash landing. You're so right, Ruff. The ground is coming up fast. Stand by for a crash landing. Thank heavens, we made it safe and sound. Well, the boys are down, but I'm not so sure about the safe and sound. Mighty grim-looking country around here. As far as the eye can see, nothing but rugged rocks and bleak peaks. What now, Giz? Ready? I volunteer you to go outside and look around. How come I get to do all the dangerous work? Just lucky, I guess. Stand by to open the hatch. As Professor Gizmo pulls the hatch latch, it opens the hatch. Natch. And our three fearless, well, uh, our three friends sneak a peek outside at this never, never land that they never should have landed in. It must be a holiday. Uh, there's nobody here. There never was anybody here, Reddy. Well, then what are we scared of, man? Let's go. How come it's not freezing out here, Professor? It seems to be a sheltered valley. Well, if we can't find anybody here, well, how can anybody find us here, huh? Well, don't fret yet. I'm expecting a search party any minute. The search for Gizmo's rocket continues, but it seems to have vanished. Meanwhile, under the ice pack, 
A spooky underwater craft cruises creepily beneath the icy sea. Inside the sneaky sub, two mysterious figures listen to the newscast. Gizmo's rocket was equipped with top secret instruments, and this valuable equipment must be found. It will be found, and we'll find it. Sure we will, Chief. <laughs> Well, it looks as if Rough, Reddy, and Gizmo have someone looking for them that shouldn't find them. But right now, they'd be happy if anybody found them. You sure there's no natives around here, Giz? Sure, I'm sure. Well, let me try just one holler for help. Help! <coughs> Who or what was that? Reddy, Professor, look! Good grief, it's a big old polar bear. And he's chasing something. <coughs> And look what he's chasing. It's a... I give up. What is it? We'll see when we see Polar Bear Scare, the next episode of Rough and Ready. Rough, Ready, and Professor Gizmo in the control section of their disabled rocket ship parachuted down to a rough landing somewhere in the frozen wastelands of the far north. Nearby, a mysterious submarine seeking Gizmo's rocket listened for news of the missing missile. As Rough, Reddy, and Gizmo looked around the barren land... Reddy! Professor! Look! Good grief! It's a polar bear! Right, Rough, but who is he chasing? Let's see what's going on in this isolated ice land. What kind of critter is that, Giz? A little old cow? Who ever heard of a cow carrying a sword? And he knows how to handle that sword, too. See what I mean? The lad's quite a swordsman, but he's no match for that big old polar bear there. We gotta help that poor little cow guy out. Ready? Come back. Ready! It's no use. When he sees a big guy picking on a little guy, Ready sees Red. Scram! Beat it! Shoo! Skidoo, you! But Reddy forgot that these two are running on ice. Scat! Get lost! Whoa! No! That ice is slick and slippery stuff. So, as Reddy starts slipping and sliding towards the bear, the puzzled polar bear tries to stop and goes into a slick skid of his own. Poor Reddy, an irresistible force, rushing head on to meet an immovable object. Something's gotta give. The little stranger doesn't know what to think of Reddy's tactics. Doggone Sunday driver. How about that? A live bear rug. That's no rug, Reddy. But he is a bear and very much alive. So, the little swordsman rushes to Reddy's side. And just as the bear rug has Reddy in a bear hug, Gizmo and Ruff rush to Reddy's rescue. But the brave little stranger attacks from the rear. A flying polar bear! Now I've seen everything! Reddy, run for the rocket! Don't worry, Reddy and his little rescuer will give that polar bear a run for his money. Gizmo and Ruff reach the rocket, but... Reddy and his newfound friend are bringing up the rear with the persistent polar bear bearing down on them. Hurry, Reddy! Step on it! Sheesh! What a close call! The little fellow makes it to safety, and Reddy makes... Reddy! The door's closing! This is no time to razz a polar bear! <laughs> Friends were lucky enough to get in, but will they be lucky enough to get out with a ponderous polar bear at the door? Don't miss A Liking for a Striking Viking, the next episode of Rough and Ready.
When Reddy was grabbed by a powerful polar bear, the mysterious little stranger rushed to Reddy's rescue, and the poor polar bear got it in the end. <laughs> While the polar bear was busy, Ruff and Gizmo ran into the rocket, and the little swordsman made it to safety. Reddy also reached the rocket, but couldn't resist razzing the puzzled polar bear. <laughs> Luckily, Gizmo grabbed Reddy and yanked him into the rocket just in time. Thanks, Giz. You saved my life. I was merely being a hero, Reddy. <laughs> If it wasn't for the professor, you'd be a polar bear's brunch, Reddy. That's enough, young man. Aye, aye, foolish fumadum. Good grief. I do believe he wants to go out and tackle that bear. Well, gee whiz, Giz, he wouldn't have a chance. He wouldn't make a between-meal snack for that bear. Quiet, boy. Simmer down. Quiet! Well, he got the message. What's up, boy? Well, speak up, son. Hey, Prof, you dig this crazy ole ole bit? Gentlemen, I speak several languages, but I don't savvy that ole stuff. The boy is dressed like a, a Viking, but there haven't been any Vikings around for about a thousand years. Well, maybe they're shooting a movie around here. Well, I still don't savvy this ole ole stuff, but maybe he's thinking of eating polar bear steak. But he can't be a Viking drat at all. There are no more Vikings. You heard what the professor said, Shorty. You're not for real. Hey, easy, boy. I was just kidding, kiddo. Gee whiz, Giz. This kid savvies English like an Englishman. I shall attempt to speak to him in his native tongue. Uh, ole, ole, outside go. Ole, ole. Ole, ole, ole. That's all he ever says. Ole, ole, put out flu shop and fuma jump. Well, where's Ole going? Hey, up the ladder. Maybe he's trying to run away. Could be, but he's heading for the opening to the nose of Gizmo's rocket. What's little Ole up to now? What's he whistling at? Maybe he's signaling to someone. Right. The little Viking is signaling. But let's see who or what he is signaling to. Well, it's a bird. A falcon, to be exact. Ole, 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 ole. So, that's the ole he's been talking about. A pet ole, falcon. Ole, Wonder what the little Viking is saying to his hunting falcon. Ole, The Falcon is a mighty hunter, but don't tell me he's going to dive bomb a big polar bear. Yes, it looks as if the fearless Falcon is out bear hunting. Sheesh, don't miss. Bear hunting is for the birds. The next episode of Rough and Ready. Fierce polar bear guarding the entrance to Gizmo's rocket, Ruff and Reddy were afraid to go outside. Professor Gizmo and the little Viking lad were also inside the disabled rocket when the Viking boy got an idea. Ole, ole! Russo, rufu! Looking out the top of the rocket, the mysterious lad whistled. Ole, ole! Soon, a hunting falcon flew down and landed on his arm. He Whoa. gave his falcon strange orders. Growl, fellow, for the lullaboom, catch him for the reef. And the polar bear that held them prisoners was dive-bombed by the fearless falcon. What's all the ruckus outside, Giz? Beats me. I can't see. But that bear sees something. See? Sure he does. He sees this feathered thunderbolt diving down at his dome. Oh, my aching head. The bear's baffled. He's never been hit by an aerial attack before. This bugs Mr. Bear. How can a tiny feathered fowl pack such a wallop? Uh-oh, here he comes again. But the powerful polar bear prepares for the attack. Don't look now, brother bear, but he went that away. Whoops, that bird's back and climbing for altitude to make another dive. 
it's unbelievable. A bear browbeaten by a bird. My word. What kind of bird is it, Professor? A falcon. A whatkin? A falcon. That's a special hunting bird. You kidding, Gears? A bird beating up on that big old bear there? Right, Reddy. This big bear bully is being beaten by a buzzsaw bird. The fearless feathered falcon strikes again. Some pet yet. A fighting falcon. That's what I'd call a fine feathered friend. Look, he is. Only he's got himself a pigeon. That's no pigeon, Reddy. That's a real, genuine falcon. A falcon? Well, it still looks like a pigeon to me. <laughs> I've been stabbed. He didn't like you calling him a pigeon, Reddy. That bird's begging to be barbecued. Speaking of barbecue, when do we eat? Ask that bird, uh, the one with the horns, if he's got any food and stuff. Good idea, Reddy. Uh, ole, ole, uh, ude, gare, ave, uh, foodum? You know, uh, grub, groceries, goodies, eat them, and like that. But as rough Reddy and Gizmo look for food, the mystery submarine is looking for them and the secret instruments on Gizmo's rocket. What's worse, it sounds like their radar has spotted our friends. I think we found the missing missile. Prepare to surface. Right, Chief. <laughs> the silly giggle on that creep gives me the creeps. It's no laughing matter, and what happens to Rough Reddy and the Professor will be no joke. Don't miss Beep Beep from the Deep Deep, the next episode of Rough and Reddy. <laughs> <laughs>